Hola amigos y amigas, I am Leila, also known as Ms. Bohemia. Today I'm coming to you wearing my PJ top. It's my way of saying I'm not coming dressed fancy in any way, shape, or form because I'm gonna get down and dirty with a project I have been putting off. So technically my content is not hair related or skate related and yet it is skate related. Why? because I need a good skate bag for my skates and my helmet and my protective gear and anything extra that's skate related that I want to stick in the bag. And I was looking around at bags. I'm a Moxie girl. I love Moxie. I love everything by Moxie. However, Moxie can be overpriced. I can't afford their suede bags because they're what, $400 or more than my roller skates. So no, no but they're beautiful and they're lined with the same lining as the lollies and they're huge and they're gorgeous, <laughs> but they're not affordable. So I was looking and I was perusing because they do have a YouTube store and I'm going to link to that below as well. And on their YouTube store, they have a selection of skate bags. And one of them that I really liked was the leopard one. However, I don't know if it's big enough and for $50 to not be sure. And then I don't want to deal with the hassle of returns, etc. I'm like, listen, I'm going to find something that is cute and aesthetically pleasing. And I'm a total Betsy Johnson girl so I started searching and searching and searching to see what would come up and I found a seller who was selling these two vintage hard to find Betsy Bill bags I am obsessed leopard print pink leopard print I don't know classic I love these this was supposed to be like the fully functioning no flaws blah 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 bag bullshit it has a flaw it's missing the betsyville zipper but i have a whole other bag that has the exact same zipper so i'm going to transfer that onto here the vinyl on this bag was supposed to be intact it's not it's not as in bad a shape as this one this one was the busted bag and i figured well i'll get the busted bag and i'll get the pink bag i scored both of them off poshmark for 60 dollars, which is an incredible deal However, I just wasn't aware of how much work rehabbing them would entail and what extent of damage this one would also be in. I thought it was just going to be this one. This one, the vinyl was completely busted. I couldn't even risk having it in my closet and filming with a busted vinyl because it was just completely flaking off the bag. And so I used one of these face razor thingies and we don't use face razors or any kind of razors in our house. My daughter, this is her form of rebellion because we epilate no razors. <laughs> But anyway, she saw me struggling, sitting there trying to figure out how on earth do I scrape off the busted vinyl off this bag. And then she fessed up to having these razors, but they're perfect for the bag. Basically just scrape, scrape, scrape and go deep and scrape past that glue layer. I'm going to insert a clip. I filmed this when I was watching television with the family because if I have to just sit there on my own, I knew that I was going to burn out. Just like I feel my burnout <laughs> doing this project today fully in my closet but i went at it it took me a few hours and you have to really dig deep not be afraid of scraping and i scraped past what i'm guessing is the glue layer and i ended up with this completely smooth surface it's a fabric it's not a leather or a plastic or anything like that i haven't done that to this bag which i will have to do at some point but just so you get an idea of what the bag looked like before this is the vinyl on the bag before i mean technically the bag looks fine without the vinyl so if you want to do a bag rehab and you have vinyl that is busted on your bag this is a good way to scrape it off and if you like the look you can just stop right there with that scraped off muted black kind of look and it also depends on the material that's under it i've seen other people scrape their bags and they end up with like a marble like gray effect and if you like it you can keep it that way so my conundrum was do i want to find a way to give it this vinyl look but with some i don't know some type of paint or material or some type of process where i don't have to worry about it peeling off because i don't want to go through this again and uh, i'm gonna go have to go through this with this damn bag and scrape everything off at some point i think right now like see it's getting to be really busted here and it's gonna start flaking off i think it still has some life in it before i have to go at it the whole entire bottom this was in horrible shape just to give you an idea of the different look this is scraped this is with its original but it one day will need the work done and so this is like my total high of a bag because she's pink leopard and i love her too but this is going to be my test subject and depending on how this comes out maybe one day when i have the will to go through all this again i will repeat the process with this bag so what am i gonna do how am i gonna do this what 
conclusion have I come to? What have I tried? Let me tell you. In my younger years, I would have jumped straight to researching something, thinking, oh, this is going to work, and not test watching it on anything and going straight on the back, screwing up, regretting it, hating myself, trying to figure out a way to fix my mistake. And I'm like, listen, let me see if I can be more level headed and test things out. And I found a mixed bag of things out there, but nothing really fully addressed my needs. To give the leather effect, I saw a lot of videos about people mixing latex paint with fabric softener to paint furniture and achieve a leather look. And then with that, it depends on the ratio that you mix it in. And it all depends on the type of paint and the type of softener you buy. And then you have to find the right ratio so it doesn't, the end product doesn't end up being sticky. And I think that's great for larger surfaces, but I'm dealing with fine-tuned work. I want something that's fast drying. That paint fabric softener mix doesn't dry too fast. It takes a while and I don't want this process to take too long so the next thing i stumbled upon was this cosplay chick who was painting a cape and she wanted to give her cape a leather type look and so she used acrylic paint and she did three layers of acrylic paint and each layer she would blow dry and it took a while but once the effect was dry it looked really good and it was malleable and it had like a leather type of feel then i also saw a lot of people using a product called edge coat which is normally used and it's marketed towards only adding that leather finish and effect to the edges of bags that are fraying so i was wondering why isn't there anything about using edge coat on larger surfaces how about a surface this large how about a surface this large would it work would it give me the desired effect because that seemed to give like a really rubbery, leathery type of vibe to it. And so I was torn between acrylic paint and the edge coat. And so I did buy acrylic paint by the brand Jacquard, which seems to have the highest rating and it seems to be touted as the acrylic paint to use on fabric. And I did test swatches. So there's two, this big one and this little one next to it. This one is three layers of acrylic paint. It took me quite a while to blow dry each layer. It's very malleable. It still feels a little thin and plasticky. It's not sticky anymore, but for many days it had a sticky feel. This one is edge coat. I did two layers, but I really don't feel like I needed to. I think one was more than enough. I was surprised by how fast it dried. I didn't see anyone use edge coats for the purposes that I wanted to use it for. I didn't see anyone blow drying it. So I was like, I'm winging it with this, but I'm in a hurry. I don't want to take forever with this project. And so I was trying to determine what do I want to go with? The acrylic paint or the edge coat? What do you think? This is the acrylic. And this is the edge coat. It's a little stiffer, but I like it. And it's darker. It has like the, I feel like it has more of a black, dark, solid presence. So the edge coat one. And so that's what we're doing today. We are rehabbing this bag with edge coat. And I'm hoping that if you are kind of in the same situation as me, this video might help you because I couldn't find anything that answered my edge coat question. So going by that fabric swatch, because most people talk about putting edge coat on leather or vinyl, but what about fabric? What about large surfaces of fabric? And putting that on like a cotton or cotton blend t-shirt seemed to do okay. So I'm guessing it should definitely do okay on this. It's fabric. It's stiffer than that. It's not leather or vinyl, but if it did well on that and it does well on leather and vinyl in this in-between material, it should do well, well as well, no? I have my edge coat. I have a bunch of brushes. <laughs> this guy at the art store that I couldn't stand and sold me the acrylic paint and wasn't really listening to my needs and kept trying to sell me neon yellow. I'm like, dude, I need black. Why the fuck are you trying to sell me neon yellow? Anyway, I returned everything, but I kept the brushes. These areas are going to be a bitch. Technically, I could sit here and painstakingly take my time to like tape them off but no, I'm just going to go in those areas ugh, with the little brush. Ooh, and hopefully I do a good job and I don't screw it up. But I have paper towels ready to go. I'm concerned with being neat and tidy through this process because I'm using my Dyson and I don't want my hands to be gunky and I don't want any of that gunk transferred onto my Dyson. That's still in. 
I'm not excited. I mean, I'm excited for the end product, but I'm not excited for the process because <gasps> it's a process. So the instructions on this say, don't shake, stir. I wonder if I should have had like a stick. I don't have any sticks anywhere. Should I pour this into something? So let's go with the large surface first. And I have to pay attention to the edge of the bag. Not taking too much. I'm doing the bottom of the bag because I do want it to have somewhat of a tougher surface than what it has now is this getting absorbed into the bag i don't know i'm gonna do one strip and blow dry and let's see how this strip turns out i'm glad i started on the bottom of the bag because it feels like it's getting absorbed i'm gonna go on the highest speed and highest heat So I'm not getting anything coming off to, on my hand. I don't feel a major difference. I see a little bit of a color difference. To test it out, I'm going to add one more layer on top of this. Because then if that makes a difference, then maybe I'll do a first layer over the entire bottom and then go in with a second layer. The idea would be if it got absorbed with the first layer, but I dry it, then with the second layer kind of accumulate over it. Unless you do an actual swatch in the material you're going to test, you never really know. But it was so different with the fabric. Why is this more absorbent if it's rougher? Being a little more liberal with my use of edge coat. I don't need to be super meticulous about the edges because this is just the bottom of the bag. I do see a color difference. Okay, let's see. does look blacker super dry it does feel more rubbery i feel like the second layer made a difference and there is a total difference when i touch it let's go ahead and do the first layer dry second layer dry and then we'll see if it needs a third layer that strip that i did originally is now looking really really good seeing it against the first layer and then seeing that this first layer that i'm applying against the raw material see the two layer one the two layers might be enough versus what I'm painting on versus raw material. I have a feeling this should work on pretty much all surfaces, all bag surfaces, honestly. If you can test it somewhere that's not fully visible, like the bottom of the bag is okay. I'm really happy with this. Yay! Now I'm excited. I'm glad I started with this large <laughs> non-detail swatch so I can kind of have a little more fun with it. Yeah, that first layer is definitely getting absorbed into the bag. Try to stir as you go along, I'm guessing. One thing that just came to mind is I was remiss in checking what kind of brushes I should use with this. I just used this on the test swatch and it seemed to do okay. I know that a lot of people use something called a dabber with the edge coat, but a dabber is good for small surfaces, which is all I've seen videos on doing the actual edges of bags and that's it. So if you're not just jumping into this kind of blindly like I did to a certain extent, do research and see what kind of brushes you might need. This acrylic paintbrush is working okay for me, but I don't know if it's the right brush or if there's anything else that would have been better suited to this paint material. It's kind of like a rubberized paint, technically. I feel like this is a pretty fast drying medium, which is nice. I like that. It kind of has like a marbly effect with the first layer, but then with that second layer, it looks really solid. Let's do... Let's see if it's dry. Yeah, that was fast. Nothing comes off of my hand. First layer and this strip has two. Going in with the second layer now. This isn't being as readily absorbed into the bag because of that first layer of edge coat, which is nice because that means it's going to give me that rubbery feel of that second layer, of that extra edge coat, which is good. It's what I'm looking for. And it's fine by me if it doesn't have like a total leather look. There's only so much you can do with paint. I've done about a third. I want to blow dry it before continuing with the second layer. I just feel like I need to. That's two layers, one layer. On a larger surface as opposed to a strip, it doesn't have that super solid feel. So let's finish it. Am I going to have to do a third layer? Is it overkill? I don't know.
two coats finished. This second coat, coat strip looks really good, but here it looks a little splotchy. I'm gonna go in with the third coat. Because it has a rubberized base already with the two coats, this is sliding on way easier and faster with a third coat for sure. And it's easier to apply more generously in this third coat, which I think is gonna help too. Getting the look I want. Kind of feels like you've got to build on it depending on the absorbency of the material you're painting this on. Creating a rubber base with the first and second layers or however many layers you need <laughs> to create that with. And then you get the full effect of the edge coat. Basically there's a learning curve depending on the material that you're using it on. Because again, everything that I've seen on it only deals with vinyl or leather. And I wanted to know does it work on fabric? So I think it does. You just have to build on it with those first initial layers creating kind of like a vinyl <laughs> if you will, vinyl leather feel to the base. And then you get to a point where you get more of that rubberized leathery feel to it, I think. So far wet, it's looking really good and it's looking more even than the second coat did. When I was doing the first and second coat, I just kept feeling like I don't have enough on my brush because I had to keep dipping, keep dipping. But now with this one, I can see that it was just getting absorbed into the fabric. Whatever I'm putting on the brush covers a larger surface than it was in the first two initial layers. So I'm guessing with each subsequent layer, if I wanted to add more layers, it would be easier and easier. But I have a feeling that the third layer will be enough, hopefully. Except for a little bit on my hands, it dried pretty well. Third layer. Look at the malleability. I don't know what to think. Is there a big difference with the natural look? Is it worth going to the trouble of doing the entire bag? What is it that I want to do? This looks amazing, but it's going to be a lot of work to do all these little surfaces. And is it worth the time? Is it going to look that different and that striking? I mean, this is pretty flimsy feeling. If ever it started to fray and I wanted it solid, then I can always have the option of going in with the edge coat. But do I really need to do anything to it right now? Do I have the time and the energy and the heart? And... <sighs> do I have it in me <laughs> right now? I don't think so. If you look at these surfaces, Who's really going to fixate on my bag? Am I even going to fixate on the bag? Is this going to bother me? Is this going to bother me? No. The surfaces that could potentially bother me are the flaps. Pretty much this area and just the entirety of the flap. And the handles. I'm going to do the flaps and the handles another day. There will be a difference between the flaps and the handles and the rest of the bag's embellishments, but I don't think it's going to be that big a deal that it's going to bother me. It could just look like a multi-layered look to the bag. I think I would be fine with it. But as far as what I was wondering in this experiment, does edge coat work on a larger surface? Does it look good? Is it durable? Is it malleable? Ideally, you want the material to not crack. I think it's amazing and it's ideal. And this experiment answers the question that no other video or resource out there answered for me. Can you use the edge coat on fabric? Yes. The way you make it work, I think, is as you saw, this was absorbing it a lot in the beginning. So I had to do one layer and dry it. Second layer still got absorbed and I dried it. And the third layer went on so much easier and it dried really well. It has a really cool feel. You can't really scratch it off. I know because I had tried on that t-shirt sample and so I'm happy with it. It has good malleability and it has that rubbery feel which I think is ideal for the bottom of my bag. Now if I was going to get super picky for example and on the flap I want it to look even more uniform than it does here, then maybe I would go in with a fourth layer. You know, you have to just kind of go with the flow and there's a learning curve to it. But if you are wondering the same thing as me, can you use this to rehab larger sections of a bag? I think it works. Again, it just depends on the material and how many layers you go in and how you apply it. It's a success. It's a yes. I'm happy with the results. I'll cater to this on my own time. I just don't have it in me to do it today. And so that's that.
If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, stay tuned for more. And if you have any questions, let me know. And if you have any tips, have you used Edge Code? Is there a material that works better than Edge Code? What is there out there that I haven't explored? Thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for more. Ciao for now.